Hi friends, this is Denaro Research and welcome to the part number 11 of Cryptocurrency Trading Bot Tutorial. In the previous videos we have implemented market data receiver that requests data from the exchange or other source and transforms it for further processing, data analyzer which is responsible for entry and exit points detection, and risk manager that helps us to minimize losses. In this video we start implementation of probably the most important component of the event loop, position manager. Position manager is responsible for the amount calculation. This amount bot will allocate to each position. But why position manager is so important? Like I said in the one of the previous videos, that in trading we always deal with probabilities. We have some amount of winning trades and some amount of losing trades. Our data analyzer module is not a perfect tool. Probably you saw from previous backtests that its accuracy is around of 60%. Even good data analyzers are not perfect too. So the, the accuracy makes it to 90 or 95 percent, but never reach 100 percent. That is why we have risk manager that handles losing trades. But let's consider following situation, like bot plans to open a long position and volatility is very high and risk manager tells to place stop loss order 20% below our entry price. Should we allocate 100% of our funds to this trade? Well, certainly not. This table is a great explanation of why you should avoid big losses. On the left hand side you see amount of losses in percents and on the right hand side you see the amount you need to recover loss, also in percents. If bot allocates 100% of funds to a losing trade, so we'll have 20% loss. So bot needs to make 25% just to recover from that loss. In case of bigger losses, things are even worse. Like in case of 50% loss, bot has to double his funds just to recover from that loss, which is very difficult or probably impossible to achieve in the short term. Probably you may have two questions. The first one, which portion of funds bot can afford to lose in one trade, and the second, which portion of funds bot should allocate to each trade. The first question is very easy to answer, because there is a general rule to keep losses below 2% level. Because if bot loses 2%, bot must make relatively the same amount to recover from that loss, and that is very easy to achieve. But in order to answer the second question, we have to make some calculations. Before we dive into calculations and math, let's consider some requirements to the position manager. Well, position manager has to avoid any losses that are greater than 1% of total funds. Position manager has to adjust position size according to stop loss. In case of big stop losses, position manager has to decrease position size. And of course, position manager has to use historical performance in order to calculate position size. In order to meet all these three criteria, we will introduce two position sizing strategies. Well, let's call the first one risk adjusted sizing. It will allow us to keep our losses below 1% and will dynamically adjust position size according to stop loss. And for the second one, we'll use so-called Cayley criterion that will allow us to measure our historical performance 
and adjust position size accordingly. Let's begin with risk adjusted sizing. First of all, we have to calculate trade risk, or in other words, percentage of potential loss when we plan to open either long or short position. It is calculated very simply. We have just deduct from one the ratio between stop loss price, which was calculated by risk manager, and position entry price, which is provided by data analyzer for the long position case, and do the opposite for the short position case. So we have deduct the ratio between entry price and stop loss price. At the second step, we have to calculate trade risk coefficient, which is a number by which our total amount of funds has to be multiplied in order to get position size. This trade risk coefficient equals to the ratio between account risk coefficient, which has constant value 100, which represents the maximum 1% of account loss per one trade. And of course, trade risk, which was calculated at the previous step. This is for the case where account risk coefficient is less than trade risk. If it is greater, then we have to do the opposite, divide trade risk by account risk coefficient. And finally, we have a formula for risk adjusted position size which equals to total amount of funds we have multiplied by trade risk coefficient which was calculated at the step 2 and hold this amount divided by entry price. This formula is used when we plan or open long and short position. Now let's look at the second strategy which is called Kelly criterion. Kelly Criterion is a very powerful money management tool. Originally it was invented by John Kelly, who worked for AT&T. He created Kelly Criterion to help AT&T with uh, its long-distance telephone noise issues. But right after publishing, Kelly Criterion gained popularity among gamblers. The gamblers used uh, Kelly Criterion in racing, poker uh, and other games in order to calculate optimal bet size. But today Kelly Criterion is widely used in uh, finance and investing too. Here is a formula for Kelly coefficient calculation. This coefficient is like trade risk coefficient in the previous example. It is a number by which our total amount of funds has to be multiplied in order to get optimal position size. But Kelly criterion or Kelly coefficient used some different inputs. We require actually two variables. The first one is winning probability, which is actually the ratio between winning trades or profitable trades and total amount of trades and win-loss ratio which can be calculated by dividing average profit from the profitable trades by average loss from losing trades. Finally, Kelly position size is calculated in the similar fashion like risk position size. We multiply total amount by Kelly coefficient and divide everything by position entry price. But because we use two different methodologies for position size calculation, obviously Kelly position size and risk position size will provide us different numbers. So what should we do with them? For final position size calculation, we will compare Kelly position size and risk position size and we'll pick the smaller number. In this case, we'll meet all three initial requirements to the position size, like keeping losses below 1%, dynamic position size calculation according to stop loss value, and of course, using historical performance for position size calculation. Well, that is all for today. 
In the next video we will start practical implementation of wrist position size and Kelly position size strategies. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!